Hi, I'm Dr. John Oldham, Chief of Staff at the Menninger Clinic. Welcome back to Mindscape, our new series, and this is the third opportunity we have to visit with Dr. Walt Menninger, and we're delighted that he's been able to spend so much time telling us a little bit about the history of Menninger and its origins, and then its growth into a landmark institution. And for this last uh, chance to chat, Walt, we thought it might be good to talk about more recent times and um, the developments after uh, where we left off, which was really around the 1960s. And, and we're in a time now when the world of healthcare has changed dramatically, and all organizations in healthcare, and Menninger's no exception, really have had to be on the alert and think about how the world is changing. How did you see that affecting Menninger? And then uh, we came to a point where there was really a big decision that was a pretty challenging one. So talk to us about recent times. Well, Menninger over the years, while having a very broad range of activities, a heart has always been the inpatient service. And in the early years, the recognition was that people didn't get well overnight or in a week. And with the program that, was, that evolved in the treatment of individuals, it often took time. Uh, people would be in the hospital for three months, six months, some for nine months or a year. In the 19, late 80s and 1990s, with health care costs burgeoning so quickly and becoming so expensive, the effort to reduce health care costs focused on the most expensive part of health care, which was hospital care. Right. Now, particularly in general hospitals with all that, but the whole idea is you reduce the number of days. Well, that had a profound hit on our census and our sense. At the same time, we were always committed to education and research and the, the public education as well. And it became evident that we could no longer fund education in the way that we wanted to. And we were then challenged to find a partner to make an affiliation with a university medical school that could assume then for us a major part of the responsibility for the education and research, and we could focus on the treatment process that we had always mastered. And, and that's interesting because we talked last time about the Menninger School of Psychiatry, which was a major educational enterprise, but I'm not sure everyone really thinks about the fact that that was so successful all on its own, but wasn't part of an academic medical school. So that kind of connection wasn't part of the uh, arrangements in Topeka, and that's part of what became more and more important. Yeah, I mean, our post, post commitment, that is, in terms of psychiatric residency or postdoctoral fellowship training in psychology. We had programs and training of music therapists and, and uh, all kinds of adjunctive therapies, social work, and the, the whole range of professionals, as well as the physicians becoming psychiatrists. And the fact that led us to make this search and indeed, we searched nationally to find an appropriate partner that had a commensurate or, a, or sometimes a complementary view of our perspective led us to make a connection with the Baylor College of Medicine and the Texas Medical Center. Right. Well, and there were really lots of complex dynamics that went into that, but two major driving forces. One is that the nature of health care, insurance funding, all of the changes in the economics uh, of health care didn't really make it possible to substantiate the continued work in the same way that had been typical at the Topeka, Kansas. And then the second thing was the, the growing need to connect with the whole world of neuroscience research, which has been exploding in the country in a way that in earlier days, really, we didn't have the technology for that to be as critically important. 
Yeah, I remember the days when I wanted to, I wanted us to be able to explore in the new imaging techniques, but we couldn't uh, put together the financing. And the Baylor College of Medicine, and particularly the Department of Psychiatry, and it's evolving, became exemplars in this area so that it, it made a nice complementary fit for this to take place. And Baylor very graciously uh, changed the name of the Department of Psychiatry to the Menninger Department right. of Psychiatry right. and Behavioral Science. And it's an exciting bringing together of these perspectives that, that hopefully allows, I mean, it has allowed us clinically, uh, if I may say so from my perspective, while I stay in Kansas, I observe what's going on in the new campus, the kind of exciting and thorough and careful clinical evaluations and treatment that takes place at Menninger now, but is complemented by new knowledge and new techniques and the opportunity to gain more. Right. You know, picking up an institution after decades in Topeka of enormous success and a really identity that was very strong and moving to Houston, Texas must have been mighty scary to a lot of I, people. And I bet you had a lot of skeptics. I, well, I know there were skeptics, but I, two or three, my major concern was that the ethic, the, the atmosphere of our major commitment of caring for the patient in the manner that we did could effectively be in, engaged in the new setting. And I was reassured when about a third of our staff made a commitment to move when the clinic moved down to Houston which is moving from a homogenous, small, Midwestern community to a, a polyglot metropolitan area. Uh, it, it, Big change. And, and, and very, uh, very few institutions have had the kind of character of practice that, and commitment of care uh, that we have manifested uh, through our years at Menninger. And it's, it's been reassuring to me with the nucleus that the, the roots have taken hold. Yeah, yeah. Well, you and I have had a chance to talk a number of times, and even yesterday at the board meeting we were talking, um, and I, I frame it this way, I think that as I see our challenge is to preserve that very skill set that the staff who came from Topeka, but others who have come since, um, have learned. This kind of work is pretty unique in the country where patients can stay and intensively in a milieu work together with peers and an interdisciplinary team for multiple weeks, four to six to eight weeks. Um, that's just very hard to find in today's world in healthcare, but what that also means is that trainees and residents and doctors, they're not being taught about this. So we have to perpetuate that ourselves. And at the same time, we've got to position ourselves and step up and be a player in all of the new findings in biology and neuroscience and the exciting new directions in the field. That's our challenge. And um, I think by most assessments, we're pretty hopeful that we're making a pretty good go of it. What's your sense of how successful we, we are at this point, and, and what are your hopes for the future? My major concern when I led the organization was that what the first doctors, Menninger, created and committed their life to, not end on my watch. <laughs> and that it be perpetuated in a way that could go to posterity. And I really feel reassured with how things are going in this setting and with the leadership that is here now. Uh, leadership professionally and lay people, it, it, it is an exciting and enthusiastic, uh, uh, it's a thrilling time, 
And I have great hopes. Good. Well, that, you know, that's a great note on which to end, Walt. And I'm actually wonderfully glad that that's where we are and that you can be proud, as you always have been, of the Menninger Clinic, but we're proud of you and your leadership and your sustained sort of activity and presence, and that's still the case as a member of our board and as someone who is really highly revered and valued. We appreciate your continued support for the, for the clinic, and we share your hope for the future, and uh, I, I'm optimistic as well. I think we're going to do really well and, and have a really a wonderful, unique um, place to sustain in the world of psychiatry. So, Walt, well, thanks very much for these three opportunities to chat, uh, and it's been great talking with you, and we share a wonderful optimism about the future uh, and look forward to it.